Good evening, and welcome to the Evergreen Mills Road realignment at Reservoir Road and Watson Road public information meeting hosted by Loudoun County. My name is Jim Zeller. I am an assistant director at the Loudoun County Department of Transportation and Capital Infrastructure in charge of the Highway Capital Program. This meeting will be conducted in a virtual manner due to COVID-19 restrictions and pursuant to the readoption of the Continuity of Operations Ordinance adopted by the Loudoun County Board of Supervisors on September 15, 2020. In these challenging times, the county has been doing its best to move forward on all priority tasks, but especially those that impact safety and quality of life. This public information meeting is to collect your input on the Evergreen Mills Road realignment at Reservoir Road and Watson Road. At this meeting, we will take your questions and provide a mechanism to leave any additional questions and comments. In the next 30 days following this meeting, members of the public may ask questions and provide comments through the project website email or U.S. mail. This information will be provided to the Board of Supervisors. Now I'd like to review a few housekeeping items before I introduce our team here in the room or the panelists. First, this meeting is being recorded and technology permitting, the recording will be posted on the project webpage following the event. Second, to manage audio quality, we've asked our panelists to remain muted throughout the event. Panelists will unmute when ready to speak. Third, meeting attendees will remain muted and without video display throughout the event. Fourth, for those that have signed up in advance to speak, we will unmute one caller at a time during the second part of the evening. If you are having technical difficulties hearing the audio, you may try the phone line instead of using computer audio. To notify us of any issues with audio, you can also chat to staff using the chat function within WebEx. Now before we begin, I would like to recognize a few people who are participating. Representing Chair Randall's office, uh, we have Board Assistant Laura Tacroni. Representing Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge District Supervisor Buffington, we have uh, Staff Member Katie Petru. And representing Catoctin District Supervisor Kirshner, we have Jonathan Bales on his staff. And Laura, Katie, and Jonathan, thank you for attending tonight's meeting. We would also like to, to acknowledge the following representatives at the meeting. Uh, representing Virginia Transportation Authority. Uh, so first, for Laura Tacroni, do you have any uh, words to add uh, for tonight's meeting? Uh, thank, thank you, Jim. I am uh, participating on behalf of Chair Randall, and I just want to thank everyone for attending, and I look forward to hearing your input uh, on this important safety improvement, and I will be sure to um, take notes and give the input to Chair Randall. Thank you. I, I, you're welcome. 
Uh, next, uh, for uh, Blue Ridge District Supervisor Buffington, uh, Katie Petru, do you have any words to add tonight? Thanks so much. Um, hi, this is Katie Petru with Supervisor Buffington. We appreciate the work staff has put into this and also, also um, all the public input to date. I'm on the call tonight, as Laura also mentioned, to listen and relay sentiments from the public to my boss, Supervisor Tony Buffington. Um, Supervisor Buffington does want to get this done in the safest and also quickest way possible. So appreciate everyone coming tonight and looking forward to hearing the comments. All right. Thank, thank you, Katie. And Jonathan, do you have any words uh, to uh, uh, kick off tonight's meeting on behalf of Supervisor Kirshner? Honestly, the words that have already been said pretty much apply to me as well. Um, I'm here to listen on behalf of Supervisor Kirshner to report back um, all of the input and ideas that come out of tonight's meeting. Um, we're very grateful to staff and to everyone who's already um, participated in this process, and we look forward to seeing what comes next. All right. Thank you, Jonathan, Laura, and Katie. You would also like to, follow, uh, to acknowledge the following representatives at, at tonight's meeting. Uh, representing the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, who is providing funding for the project, uh, Mr. Haroon Rashid, uh, who works for the NVTA as the transportation planner. And DTCI would like to thank NVTA for their thorough review process for funding this project. Next, representing the Virginia Department of Transportation, we have Mr. Sunil Teori, Assistant Director for Transportation and Land Use uh, at VDOT for Loudoun County. Now, uh, before we get started, we have a few more introductions. Uh, I am al I'm also joined today by Mr. Bruce Johnston, who is Deputy Director of Loudoun County VTCI. Uh, Mr. Mark Hoffman, Design Program Manager at DTCI. Marie Tarabayo, Civil Engineer at DTCI and Manager of the Evergreen Mills Project. And our Design Consultant, J2 Engineers, to answer questions regarding Evergreen, the Evergreen Mills Road widening and realignment. And our Traffic Consultant, Michael Baker. Representing J2 engineers are Mr. Jim Bischoff and Mr. Ian Cathcart, and representing Michael Baker is Mr. Anthony Donald. Jim Bischoff will be serving as moderator during the technical presentation for the, uh, for the evening. Now before I hand the presentation over to Jim from J2 engineers, I'd like to offer a timeline for this project. The adopted fiscal year 2018 Capital Improvement Program, or CIP for short, included the Evergreen Mills Road, Watson Road Reservoir Realignment Project with funding allocated for fiscal year 2022, which in later fiscal years, uh, funding was accelerated to fiscal year 2019. In late 2017, through the Board of Supervisor Initiative, the Board funded a safety audit of Evergreen Mills Road and Watson Road. For the safety audit of Evergreen Mills Road and Watson Road, the study team worked with interested members of the community to capture local observations, perspectives, and concerns along each corridor. This two-way interaction created an accurate way to share information and ideas between the community and study team, which helped to foster a positive environment with a sense of ownership for the community. The county completed the Evergreen Mills Road Safety Audit Study in 2019. That study identified short, middle, and long-term projects. In the chat box, you will see a link to the Evergreen Mills Road Safety Audit. Now, 
this public meeting is intended to focus on Evergreen Mills Road, Reservoir, and Watson Road. If you have any further questions regarding the audit, please visit the project website shown in the chat box of this meeting. Uh, uh, finally, I would like to, to add my observation of resulting from over 20 years of developing transportation capital projects. It has been my experience and the experience of the project team that this public involved, that th these public involvement processes almost always results in some kind of improvement to the final product. So that's why we very much welcome all of your input. Now with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim at J2 for the technical presentation. Good evening. I'm, Jay, I'm Jim Bischoff with J2 Engineers. And I'm pleased to be serving as the design project manager for the Evergreen Mill realignment at Reservoir Road and Watson Road. I'd like to introduce my colleagues on this project with me, Ian Capcart with J2 Engineers and Anthony Donald with Michael Baker International. Anthony is working on the traffic portion of the project. J2 Engineers is a local multidiscipline professional engineering and surveying firm focusing on transportation services in planning, design, and management to public agencies. J2 has been working on projects in Loudoun County for more than 10 years. The firm has served as an engineering consultant for roadway and transportation design services to Loudoun County DTCI uh, from, since 2015. I have more than 33 years experience in planning, designing, and management transportation projects throughout Virginia, including dozens of projects in Loudoun County. Prior to coming to work at J2 Engineers, I served as VDOT Assistant Location Design Engineer for the Northern Virginia District Office Managing Primary Systems. My colleague, Ian Capcart, has more than eight years' experience designing road projects and related infrastructure for related infrastructure clients in Virginia, including the Virginia Department of Transportation and Loudoun County. Project overview. This project provides for planning, design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction of the realignment of Evergreen Mill Road at the intersection of Reservoir Road and Watson Road. Proposed improved, I'm sorry, um, project purpose and need. The purpose is to evaluate and develop improvements to address safety without impacting the existing bridge at Goose Creek. The solutions will allow drivers to safely operate through the intersection. The design will meet current VDOT design criteria. The improvements will address deficiencies by increasing roadway widths, improving site distance, providing shoulders, adding turn lanes at the intersection to allow safe flow through the intersection, and upgrading uh, existing drainage that's associated with the, uh, with the improvements. Existing conditions. The current posted speed limits are 55 miles an hour for Evergreen Mill Road, 45 mile an hour for Watson Road, and 25 miles an hour for Reservoir Road. The existing lane widths vary from 10 to 11 foot on Evergreen Mill Road with shoulder widths up to two feet. 10 to 11 foot on Watson Road with shoulders up to two and a half feet. And nine to 10 foot on Reservoir Road with no shoulders. The approximate 2019 traffic volumes are 9,300 vehicles per day on Evergreen Mill Road 2,900 vehicles per day on Watson Road, and 180 vehicles per day on Reservoir Road. The proposed improvements. The proposed design speeds are 45 miles an hour on Evergreen Mill Road, 40 mile an hour on Watson Road, and 25 miles an hour on Reservoir Road. After completion of the design, 
a speed study will be conducted to evaluate the posted speed limits. The proposed lane widths are 12 foot on Evergreen Mill Road with an 8 foot paved shoulder, 12 foot on Watson Road with a 4 foot paved shoulder, and 11 foot on Reservoir Road with a 4 foot paved shoulder. The new intersection will be signalized and will have turn lanes at each approach. The proposed roadway grading will accommodate the future roadway widening, which improves site distance. Its other benefits include minimizing future land disturbance and land acquisition. The Watson Road improvements will include a multi-cell box culvert passing runoff to Goose Creek. The proposed typical section for Evergreen Mill Road. This section depicts uh, through lanes in each direction, 12 feet wide, eight foot paved shoulder, a raised median, approaching turn lanes, and graded ditches to convey runoff. Again, grading will accommodate the future roadway widening outside the ditches, which improves site distance. Typical section for Watson Road. This typical section is a two lane section, one, one lane in each direction, 12 feet wide, with a four foot paved shoulder, no median, but we do accommodate approaching turn lanes. Typical section for Reservoir Road. It's two lane section, one in each direction, 11 feet wide, a four foot paved shoulder, and no median. The project schedule and cost. This is a preliminary project schedule. Um, we anticipate uh, the board supporting or endorsing this project in early 2021, with final design being approved in summer of 2021. We will begin land acquisition shortly after approval in summer of 2021. Uh, beginning the, after right away acquisition process, we begin the utility relocation uh, spring of 2022 begin construction spring of 2023 and hoping to complete the project uh, spring of 2025. That is a 24 month construction period. The total estimated project cost is between 21 and $25 million. I'll turn the presentation over to Maria Caraballo, the County Project Manager for the, Lowen for the Evergreen Mill Road Project. Thank you, Jim. Um, next step um, for the project, comment period. All written comments need to be received by DPCI by October 23, 2020. Information on how to submit comments can be found on the Evergreen Mills Road public information web section. After that, DPCI will seek, design will seek Board of Supervisors endorsement of the design in early 2021 at a future board business meeting. All comments received will be presented to the Board of Supervisors for their consideration. At that time, citizens will have another opportunity to offer any comments and remarks regarding the project. Date of the design endorsement business meeting will be posted on the project website when available. Project team contact information can be found on this slide with Loudoun County, James Seller, Mark Hoffman, myself, Marie Carabello, Vita Project Manager, Yao Lu, and our consultants, J2 Engineers and Michael Baker. The presentation will be posted on the project website starting tomorrow. Now we will go into the live Q&A portion of the meeting. If you have not yet had the opportunity, please visit our Evergreen Mills Road project page at loudon.gov slash Evergreen Mills Realignment to access a link to view diagrams and submit comments. If you have signed up to speak by the deadline, you will be called upon your name and given two minutes to ask your question. Speakers will be called upon in the order signups were received. If you join the meeting using the WebEx link, be sure to have selected phone or computer audio in the WebEx application. 
so your question can be heard by other participants. Thank you to those who have already submitted comments. There is also an option to submit questions throughout the chat box tool in WebEx. After the study team reviews and responds to the chat of questions, time permits, we will provide a review and closing statement to wrap up the portion of the public information meeting. We will start the next portion of the meeting in about one minute. We will now begin with the live Q&A portion of the meeting. This will include speakers who signed up in advance to ask a question by phone. Please listen to your name to be called and allow us to confirm that you can hear prior to asking your questions. Each person will be given two minutes to ask their question and speak. Please keep an eye out on the timer on the screen, if you can, or monitor your own time. But we will also give you a heads up when nearing the time if needed. Our first speaker of the evening is Ms. Jane Bishop. Ms. Hi, Bishop, you, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Please okay. go ahead. You now have two minutes. All right. Um, good evening. My name is Jane Bishop, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening in favor of the Evergreen Mills Watson Reservoir Roads Realignment Project. My family lives just off of Watson Road, approximately one mile from the intersections of Evergreen Mills and Watson. I am extremely familiar with this stretch of road as it is an intersection that my family travels multiple times a day, every single day. While several safety improvements have been made in recent years, there's still one major and potentially deadly safety issue that must be addressed. And this is the intersections of Evergreen Mills with Reservoir and Watson. Currently traveling west on Evergreen Mills approaching Watson, cars and trucks are traveling 45 miles per hour downhill and around a curve, often to be met with a car at a standstill, waiting for through traffic to clear before turning left onto Watson. It is not uncommon to see a dented guardrail or black skid marks on the pavement from vehicles slamming on brakes trying to stop before a rear end event. When the Watson Evergreen Mills intersection is discussed these days, many people are reminded of a terrible recent fatality involving a local family. This is an event that has had an enormous impact on me personally because I was there. That day, on my way home from work, I initiated a left turn from Evergreen Mills onto Watson to be met immediately with an out of control food truck that barreled past me through the intersection and T-boned the car that had been directly behind me on Evergreen Mills. By five seconds, my children did not lose their mother that day, but three other children did. So I'm here to advocate for the implementation of any and all safety measures possible for this intersection, specifically the realignment of Evergreen Mills, Watson and Reservoir Roads to improve the line of sight, resulting in a safer community. Please consider an approval of this realignment project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Bishop. Our next caller is 
Ms. Lauren Norkin. Ms. Norkin, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you now have two minutes to speak. I saw the density map in the safety audit. There's an obvious high density bubble which encompasses not only the intersection, but also the entire S-curve corridor, which runs in front of my house. This safety bubble, this density bubble represents 59 accidents in total, but you only evaluated 28 accidents right at the intersection of your safety audit. Why didn't you evaluate these additional 31 accidents along the S-curve corridor, including the twin boys who in 2012, which is during your study period, burned alive on a pine tree in our ditch on Evergreen Mills Road in between Watson Road and Reservoir Road. Two weeks later, my coworker's husband landed in the same ditch. How would this intersection have protected them? The twins crossed the center line at the northern apex of the S-curve at 80 miles an hour before they landed in our ditch. How would this intersection have protected us from them and other people driving 55 miles per hour, which is the legal speed limit now, and even at 45, because you know they're not going to go 45, and sometimes higher than that, because people enjoy speeding so much on this S-curve. Facebook, oppose Watson Road realignment now. I'm done. Thank you, Ms. Norkin. Ms. Norkin, to address um, some of the questions in your um, statement, um, for the first one regarding the crashes in the road and safety audit, um, we can direct you to the link and any of the Loudoun County employees that will have that information. Um, we would certainly be able to um, provide you their contacts for that. Regarding the crash departure question, um, Anthony, can you answer? Some of our questions. Uh, sorry, uh, Marie, you're referencing the uh, crash departure that was referenced by Ms. Norkin. Yes. Uh, that crash was not um, as a part of the data for the, the evaluation of this intersection, as um, that was outside of the the project limits um, for the evaluation that. We were um, we were performing. Uh, that Thank would you, I, and I I would direct uh, that back to the the RSA. Thank you very much, Anthony. We will now go to the next uh, speaker in line. It's Mr. Douglas Norkin. Mr. Norkin, are you there? Um, yes, I believe so. I didn't have to unmute anything because I think uh, my wife just spoke. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You now have two minutes. All right, well, um, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak here. Um, I am quite familiar with the, these, not just those intersections, but the entire um, from coming upon my driveway entrance to Watson Road, as you can imagine. Um, in addition to the accident referenced by my wife just now, I've seen helicopters land on my property and a number of other things which probably will be brought up. But I had a question with regard to the four different speed zones that are presently on Evergreen Mills Road, which were discussed in the immediate overview, I do believe. Um, they range from 35 miles an hour to 55 miles an hour currently, regardless of whether the decision to reduce has been made yet, as of yet. Um, so for the Blind Hill S-curve corridor, which narrows in uh, with the narrow lanes and the forest, the speed limit is 55 miles an hour. Uh, the 2019 safety audit did not conduct the speed study, but recommended that one be done. And I want to know if one was conducted and what the results of that study, that speed study were. Um, also, with Thank what you, Mr. speed, uh, I still have my. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, what speed was that uh, safety study? if conducted, conducted for. And to augment this question as it was originally written, what's gonna keep people going any legal speed limit? Because if it's 45, I know all too well that 
drivers are going to go 55, 60, even more. Thank you, Mr. Narkin. Um, to answer that question, I think between myself and Aaron and Cindy, we can um, answer your question. Um, a speed, from my understanding, a speed study was not part of the scope for the road and safety audit conducted in 2019. It is a part of the scope of this project. It will be conducted. Um, it has not started yet, but it is part of the scope of the project and a um, speed study will be done. Anthony, can you speak a little bit um, about this and his follow-up question regarding um, what measures will will help with the uh, slowing down of vehicles? Uh, yeah. So, like Marie said, the uh, the speed study will be done. Um, to uh, to confirm what the speed limit will be as a part of a pro of the project that will be uh, as a, a part of the uh, ongoing design. Uh, an additional speed study will be done following the uh, the completion of the project to confirm the speed limit. Um, regarding what keeps people going, <laughs> this, the posted speed limit. It's a really open-ended question. Um, and it's very situationally dependent. A lot of that can do with enforcement, um, particularly for um, this uh, this location. Um, the the design elements of um, the horizontal and vertical alignment that don't ha uh, don't allow people to feel like they can do 70 miles an hour is is part. Of that. Um, but also making sure that we're, we're providing um, uh, a road design that is um, safe and to the, to the standards that um, we're using to the, for the design speed. Um, we would also like to confirm that the design, the speed study will be conducted is between the limits of our project. And like Anthony said, um, this is something that is usually done at the end of the project. Um, before VITA accepts um, completion of the project, they will be seeking for a speed study for, for it. Um, Mr. Dimzeller has additional comments regarding those questions. Uh, yes, you, you had uh, one of your questions, Mr. Norton, rega uh, was regarding uh, the ability uh, to enforce uh, the existing speed limits throughout the corridor. Um, that was one of the findings of the, of the RSA study of the entire corridor was the lack of, of places where, uh, where speed control can be enforced by, uh, by you know, Loudoun County uh, Sheriff's deputies. And uh, the recommendation of that study included um, several uh, enforcement areas uh, throughout the corridor where you know, people could be um, uh, pulled over for speeding. Uh, two locations in the, um, along the Evergreen Mills Road corridor, one location in the Watson Road corridor. And, uh, and, and those measures are among the um, uh, uh, short and midterm improvements that are being considered for addition to, um, to the county's capital improvement program. Thank you, Jim. Our next speaker is Patricia Sweeney. Ms. Sweeney, can you hear us? Yes. You now have two minutes to speak. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank thank you. Um I'm a 30 year Watson Road resident and um I don't know who, who um believes that Watson Road is suitable for the cut through traffic that, that it, it endures. It is a old country road um, with, with no engineered safety features whatsoever. There's no safe stopping distances. There's no um, visibility. It's got nothing but horizontal curves and vertical curves. 
I've talked to the sheriff. The sheriff says we can't even enforce the 45 mile an hour speed limit, which is way too fast because there's no place to pull people over because Watson Road is so narrow that you we can't even have um, outside lines. There's no shoulders, there's no outside lines, there's only a center line. This is a former dirt road, wrongfully paved, wrongfully used for shortcut cutters. Now, regarding the Watson Road realignment, um, the 2017 fatal crash that killed a mother of three, the only thing that could have prevented that accident would have been runaway truck ramps because at, there's a 200 foot drop in elevation and Watson Road has a two mile downhill grade. So that runaway truck, even with the realignment, how is this gonna prevent, how is this gonna overcome the 200 foot downhill grade from the halfway point of Watson Road going down to Goose Creek uh, Bridge? How is, how, is this, how is this in any way productive? And, um, why doesn't when is Watson Road going to get um, stop using it for cut through traffic? When is this going to be controlled? And um, I don't know. Why didn't you look? Why didn't you look into a runaway truck ramp? Because that's that's what happened. That was a runaway truck. And um, what what else? I guess I, I guess that's that that that's all. That I'm I'm very opposed to this project. Um, obviously. Um, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sweeney. Um, Mr. Bishop, may you respond to how the project will address the safety issues and concerns? So the proposed realignment of Watson Road will move the alignment southbound, which actually increases the grade of the roadway so you don't have that differing elevation uh, in the roadway. So. That's going to be one, addressing one of her concerns is as you approach from the, from the south, as you approach the intersection, you're, you're going uphill and actually selling out on a level intersection, four lane intersection with signal. We also have the addition of new paved shoulders and graded shoulders on Watson Road. Um, additional 12 foot lanes on Watson Road, which is much wider than the existing lanes, um, as well as features like guardrail that will also allow an increased safety at the intersection. Uh, Mr. Seller. And uh, again, just kind of reiterate uh, one of the enforcement areas uh, that was recommended from the RSA study. Uh, included an enforcement area uh, along the Watson Road corridor, uh, so that would um, uh, enable uh, better uh, speed control than, than what's out there today. Thank you. Our next speaker of the evening is Mr. Dan Dewis. Are you there, Mr. Dewis? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You now have two minutes to speak. Great, thank you. Yeah, we've been here on Reservoir Road for 35 years. During that time, I've been pulling people off the guardrails and out of the ditches at Watson Road and, Re and Reservoir for years because they've been sliding off, they've been coming down too fast, they've been hitting the guardrails. It's been a, a nightmare. We had four kids that we raised and we would act, literally listen to them when they would go down the road because we can hear the brakes squealing on, on Evergreen Mills as people are trying to pull out and stop and, and crash into people. So we listen for that. It's been a nightmare for us. Over that time, I would say that I have a solution that uh, I've always thought was the right one, and that's to move the top of reservoir, follow the pipeline easement, because our problems are our line of sight. And if we would move it to the top of the hill, we would have a line of sight. There's not a problem with line of sight for Watson Road where it is. The big problem is the speed and not just cars, we're talking about trucks and they have momentum. They're coming down those hills loaded with uh, gravel and concrete and they just can't stop. The school buses are pulling out. We just have been, when they said that, I, I'm a chaplain with the fire department, when they said that there was the accident and a school bus was involved, I see, I've been expecting that for years, but I thought it would be somebody's uh, plowing into the back of a school bus 
waiting to turn left onto Watson Road. Even if you do what you've suggested doing, which it might work, you still have a line of sight problem over the hill on um, Evergreen Mill. And that's why if you would realign reservoir and put a circle there, that would slow all the traffic coming down so they can't speed down that hill. And that would protect the people at Watson Road. And that makes sense to me. Uh, uh, re rearrange Evergreen, align it. I mean, a, a reservoir, align it properly on Evergreen with a circle, gives everybody time, slows the speed. I think it cures most of the problems. I don't know if anybody ever looked at that issue, but in 35 years of studying it, that's what I came up with. And I've never had an opportunity to tell anybody what the master plan would be. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bishop, can you answer his comment and question? Yes. Um, we had not looked at that option, but since it is now comment, um, I will be directed to evaluate that option and make that part of the transcript. Thank you. Um, for our next caller, we have Ms. Debbie Daniel. Ms. Hi, Daniel, yes. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you now have two minutes to speak. Okay, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my family's lived on Evergreen Mill. We're on the west side. We're the first property north of Goose Creek. So we are basically one of the closest properties to that intersection. And we've lived here 16 years. My husband's family has owned the property since the 1800s. So we are extremely familiar with Evergreen. We raised three teenagers here. And like Mr. Dewis just expressed, I prayed every time my kids were leaving our driveway because one of my biggest concerns is that the entire corridor needs to be taken into account. Um, in May of 2012, a 19-year-old boy um, lost control of his vehicle going southbound towards the Goose Creek Bridge where the curves and line of sight issues start on the north end. He failed to negotiate the curve towards the river. He clipped an abandoned boat on the side of the road and then went head on into a dump truck where he met his demise in front of our house. Um, so I'm just wondering if really all of the parameters were taken into consideration after the horrific accident that occurred with the runaway uh, bus. Um, I was one of the first ones on the scene. My husband and I were out in the yard working that day and heard that accident happen. I certainly too, like our first caller said, am all about wanting safety measures for that intersection. But I think the safety measures have to include the entire S-curve region. And from what I'm he seeing and hearing with this proposal, it does not take into account everything that needs to be taken into account. There was another accident that occurred um, that was mentioned earlier about um, going off the road. And I, somebody's response was it wasn't in the parameters, but that accident that occurred with the death of two young men um, was in between Watson and Reservoir Road. And so I'm just asking, I do not want um, anybody's death to not be taken into account in this region when you're figuring out the safety. One of the biggest factors is speed. We've already noted throughout this that speed is very hard to control through here. And so I do not know how moving an intersection up a blind curve is going to help make the situation safer. I just foresee a lot more tires squealing and a lot more dangerous accidents occurring. So I'm just asking and begging everyone that's involved in this project to take a good hard look at the safety of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Daniel. Um, I can say that we appreciate your comments and that we will definitely take your comments into consideration. Um, it is our priority to make this intersection as safer for everybody. So I think we, we will definitely take into consideration your comments. Uh, Does anybody else do? And, uh, uh, Ms. Daniel, I know we've uh, 
staff has been uh, uh, furiously writing while, while uh, you've been giving your your uh, your input, but uh, uh, it would be uh, uh, be a big help if you could you know, kind of uh, write out your comments and email them uh, to us, and uh, so we can make sure that we are uh, answering your your questions and and. Uh, uh, taking the full consideration of your uh, uh, your suggestions and ideas. Thank you, Jim. Our next speaker is Mikhail Mahale. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Are you there? Mikhail? Okay, we will circle back and see if Mr. Malay um, connects again. Um, our next speaker would be Ms. Lisa Stanton. Are you there? Yes, hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, you now have two minutes to speak. Great, thank you. Um, I appreciate the attention that this realignment is receiving, but I do not think that this current design is the best one. Um, I've lived off Reservoir Road since the mid 90s. Um, I've been in a rear end uh, collision, turning left on, from Reservoir onto Re Evergreen Mills Road. Um, since then, all of my car purchases I've uh, purchased relative to the power that they could get me up that hill and around the curves. Um, often my neighbors and I would turn right and make a U-turn um, in order to accommodate the lack of sight for this roadway. Um, we also, um, I agree with moving Reservoir Road to the top of the hill, as Dan mentioned. Um, I think that's the best option for this road. I don't know if um, anyone else uh, on the panel or in the engineering firm has been to the site and tried to take a left-hand turn out of Reservoir or out of um, Watson Road. But um, if you did, you would see exactly what we're referring to. Um, I don't see where a light in the valley is going to help anything. In fact, I think it will be worse. I do support um, doing a uh, roundabout um, either on the south end and on the north end um, instead of the light. I think that's probably the best option, as you can see from different studies from uh, the highway safety and um, also federal highway administration um, roundabouts do reduce um, overall collision rates by 37%, 75% injury collision. So um, that's what I would propose as well as reducing the speed, um, which it sounds like you guys have suggested that. I don't know where the topography maps are for this project. If you could refer me to that, that would be great as well. Thank you, Ms. Um, Stanton. Um, we can, topography is included in the 30% plan for the project, which can be found in the Loudoun County um, uh, Loudoun County application, uh, online application. Um, we will be happy to post a link to that um, and reply. If you search by project name, you can find the project, um, the plans that have been submitted for the 30% and those plans include topography in them. And we appreciate your comments regarding you know, uh, the visibility, the sight distance, and your preferences for roundabouts. We will definitely take notes of that. And like Mr. Seller um, said, if you can include those in any comments, forms, or email as well, we would appreciate that as well. Thank you. Our next caller for the evening is Ms. Natria Rampi. Yes. Thank you. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Natria Rampy, and I'm a mother of three, one of which is a new driver. Like, literally, he got his driver's license this past Sunday. Um, and having to teach him and try to turn off of Reservoir Road, because that's where we live, has been, like, very, very hard, hard stopping at times. Um, I see that you're not changing too much in Evergreen Mills Road other than to align 
Watson. Um, if the intersection is at Reservoir Road, to the right, you can't see oncoming traffic at all since the road sits behind the intersection, um, unless you happen to be literally standing in the middle of the road. To the left, there's a crest that we can't see over and we only have two seconds to get out. So usually I tell the children to turn off the radio, nobody talks and we're gonna take a deep breath and I'm looking and then we go. Um, basically that's a family rule. Uh, what will happen with somebody leaving Reservoir Road if they have a green light and a northbound driver on Evergreen Mills Road blows his red light? How do you plan to get rid of the crest around the gas line easement on Evergreen Mills Road? What about the steep hill on the last stretch of Reservoir Road? Last year, we couldn't get out at all because v, uh, VDOT didn't, um, wasn't able to come out and salt. So we, it's hard for us already to come down that really steep hill to stop because it's usually iced because with the foliage and everything, it's covered and shaded. Um, how are we supposed to stop at the red light when we get to the bottom? Uh, please come out during rush hour. Come try driving out from Reservoir Road and you'll see exactly why, you know, we, or at least I am opposing the realignment, but I do appreciate that you guys are trying to find a solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rampy. But we definitely appreciate your comments and um, we will direct it to Mr. Jim Bishop to address some of your questions regarding the crest and, and the site distance problems at Reservoir. So you had mentioned as you're approaching the intersection of Evergreen Mill Road, if you look right, you said you can't see. Our proposed design uh, is actually cuts the hillside back so you'll actually see cars coming across the bridge which will improve your sight distance. Um, another concern is how you're going to uh, maneuver off of Reservoir Road onto uh, Evergreen Mill. Well, it's gonna be signal controlled. So by having it signal controlled, you'll have safe ingress, egress uh, onto Evergreen Mill Road. Um, the, the vertical curve uh, looking, looking south from the intersection, uh, you're correct, there is a, a gas line there that, um, that um, affects the current uh, posted speed limit, but our design speed is 45 miles an hour, which will improve that sight distance. And the steepness of Reservoir Road, unfortunately that falls outside our study, our project limits. Um, however, our project does create a level landing as you approach the intersection, which will help address some of your uh, control coming off of the steep grade on Reservoir Road. Thank you, Jim. Um, our next speaker for the evening is Mr. Tom Curtis. Mr. Curtis, are you there? Good evening, yes, can you hear me? Yes, you now have two minutes to speak. Great. So I'd like to speak in favor of the uh, county's proposal for a pretty comprehensive plan to address its uh, most dangerous intersection. I think Tony Buffington gets a lot of credit for pushing this along uh, back in the early days. Uh, the, uh, one indicator of how dangerous the intersection is is how often the guardrails uh, need to be replaced along there. As one earlier speaker commented, uh, where uh, uh, people are trying to to get out from Watson Road on the Evergreen Mill Road. Um, it's difficult to go up the hill uh, and it's, it's uh, sight lines are horrible uh, in either direction trying to turn from there. Um, the flashing lights currently don't work uh, as they're supposed to. They were added to increase safety, but they don't work because they've been hit um, and the impact damage has caused them not to, not to work anymore. Uh, I, I think there are some people who spoke in opposition to this plan, but I think uh, we have to get past the, the uh, narrow self-interest and address the larger public safety issues here and, and uh, fix this intersection. I do like the roundabout idea at the top of Evergreen Mill Road, meaning um, uh, as the very north on, uh, north, uh, on Evergreen Mill Road, that would slow traffic down. Um, 
quite a bit. But uh, intersection, um, as as other people have alluded to, is particularly dangerous uh, because it's curving downhill. Uh, you can't see very well, and in winter it's treacherous because of the ice and snow. So I think uh, this uh, this project needs to move um, forward rapidly and get let's get it started as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Curtis. Um, we have one more speaker for the evening um, that we had um, was not present before. Um, I'd like to check and see if Mr. Mikhail Mahalay is present. Okay, so it doesn't seem like they're on the line. Um, I would like to give everybody special thanks um, for everybody who opted to call in and ask your questions in this format. Our comment form will be open on the website through October 23rd of this year. And please use that to send in your comments and questions. We will now begin the next portion of the meeting within a minute. Please post any questions in the chat and we will address we will address We will now begin the last portion of the Q&A session, receiving questions via the chat box. If you have questions to ask the team, we welcome you to enter your questions into the writing, into, in, in writing in the chat box, which is the blue circle on the WebEx control bar that has a call sent. I will be receiving these questions, Ian Cathcart, and reading them for the benefit of all attendees. I'm just going to go through. We've gotten several questions already, so I'm just going to start um, asking them. Some of them will be sort of grouped together because they um, are similar to others. But one one question from Mr. Jeff Wheeler is, what is the grade of the road leading to this new intersection on the northbound Evergreen Mills Road? Even with improved sight lines between the curve and slope, it seems like a crash risk to have it stop traffic there. Um, the grade going down towards Bruce Key Bridge from Evergreen Mills Road is currently about 9%. It's fairly we are getting that grade for, for this project. Um, the, the 
Excuse me, Ian. We would like everybody to please mute your phone if you're not speaking. Thank you. So uh, one of the things with the with the proposed improvements is the inclusion of turn lanes allows people that will be stopped at the intersection to, that are going to be making movements to get out of the through through traffic lanes and allow um, traffic to continue to go smoothly on Evergreen Mills during green light. Um, Another question that was sort of repeated um, that we'll kind of loop through together, but some more questions about the roundabout considerations, um, both with regard to traffic and safety. Um, from a uh, geometric perspective, we did consider roundabouts and other alternative intersections, um, but the topography of the area really limits what we can do. Um, it's generally not recommended to install roundabouts on longitudinal steep grades uh, greater than four or five percent. And that 9% grade that we have really makes it difficult to design safe approaches to the roundabout. Um, and so for that reason, geometrically, it, it wouldn't make sense. Um, Anthony, would you want to talk about the traffic impact of the roundabout option? Uh, yeah, so the roundabout was one of the uh, other considerations as a part of the process um, that we went through with VDOT. Um, getting the, the necessary approvals for this um, for this intersection, um, and ultimately, while the uh, the operations were somewhat comparable, uh, there was a, uh, a considerable concern for the uh, the queue northbound um, as future traffic um, continued to grow along this corridor um, that would hamper the uh, operations here, uh, and that coupled with the geometric challenges. Um, of a roundabout at this location, uh, it was determined that a signal was the um, preferred traffic control for the intersection. Uh, I'd also like to address the, uh, uh, the comparison with the Route 50 at Watson uh, roundabout, and uh, kind of following up on, on uh, Ian's explanation, uh, Route 50 uh, at Watson Road is very level and therefore lends itself well to uh, operations of, of, uh, of the roundabout. Thank you, Jim and Anthony. I'm um, going to proceed with some other questions that just have been asked. Um, Mrs. Deborah Daniel asked, is it typical to come up with and present a plan prior to a speed study? Uh, if not, why was the project handled this way? Um, I'm going to ask Anthony to chime in on that one as well. Speed studies can happen for a variety of reasons and at different times. Um, as the, I believe it was noted that the RSA recommended a speed study and we are um, effectively performing that speed study to help confirm uh, the proposed speed limit. But VDOT's policy would then be they would have to have a speed study following the project uh, to confirm the, the proposed speed limit. So it's sort of a, um, a, a twofold situation here where uh, we are performing a speed study, but then uh, it, will, it would be confirmed at the end of the project um, once it's been completed. Another question we received from Ms. Rhea Rampey was, what other alternatives did you consider? Um, and how do we feel about other alternatives that have been floated? Um, during the concept study phase, the first part portion of this project, we considered four different uh, alignment alternatives for Watson Reservoir and Evergreen for this intersection. Um, one of the biggest constraints we have was the existing Goose Creek Bridge, which we, uh, this project is not scooped to impact. Um, so some of those, some of those uh, options were really hampered by that, um, and it, as well as the, the general property impact, that was one of the biggest things to be considered um, when, when looking at different alignment options. Um, there was a, another question about how does the plan work with the long-term plan of widening Evergreen Mills? And this project does account for that ultimate configuration. Um, the median placement along Evergreen Mills is set up, sets up that it will be reused in the ultimate condition and the full right-of-way and grading that will be needed for the ultimate lanes and pedestrian facilities will be uh, graded out at this point to minimize
minimize earthwork later and to improve site distance in the interim condition. Um, Jim, do you, Jim Dillard, would you like to expand on that at all? Um, a, a little bit. Uh, uh, it's just kind of reinforcing the the uh, how uh, this project will also accomplish the uh, the rough grading of the planned uh, four lane section of Evergreen Mills Road, uh, and that work by itself will uh, uh, will open up the lines of sight uh, through this this segment of road. As well as the uh, the connections at um, Watson Road and Reservoir Road. Um, I did want to come back to um, uh, the second part of uh, Ms. Rampey's question about uh, about how staff feels about the Norkin plan. Um, that proposal is is it's actually it's outside our project limits. Um, and, and we are focusing on the uh, uh, of the uh, needs of the Watson and Reservoir intersection. Um, as if, if we had unlimited funding and resources, we would love to fix the entire corridor. But you know, this is you know, what we can do with with the budget that we have. Thank you, Mr. Zeller. Um, another question from Mrs. Norkin is, what are the measures you use to determine the unit of safety improvement, and how much does this intersection improve safety? What is the estimated annual frequency of future angle collisions and rear end collisions after signals are, in, are in, in, included? Um, I'm going to let Anthony speak to that in detail, but I know that uh, to a certain degree, not all of that data is, is readily available. Um, Anthony, can you expand on that? Uh, so there's there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I don't think we've got the, the time here to to thoroughly answer that question, uh, but we will log that uh, and, and provide a thorough response uh, to answer your question. Okay, there's some other questions about roundabouts at different locations, such as at the top of the hill or uh, north of Goose Creek Bridge. Um, I believe, Jim so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but generally speaking, those uh, investigations would be outside the scope of this particular project, which is really just focusing on the one safety improvement. Um, there's a question about what if the project fails confirmation. Um, project will need to be approved by both Loudoun County and VDOT, um, and we will have to get their, get their final sign-off and approval before this project can move forward. Um, there is a, a question regarding what are the safety trade-offs of signalizing the intersection. Um, the question involves whether or not uh, angle crashes will be uh, sacrificed while the increase of rear end crashes might happen. Um, the questions about the blind curve and accidents coming around the S curve, how will the project be affecting those incidents? Um, Anthony, could you uh, respond to the safety related questions? Um, sure. I mean, it, speaking in generalities, um, traffic signals uh, do decrease angle crashes while there um, is an expected increase in rear end crashes. Uh, our project will evaluate uh, all of the issues uh, related to the design for the, um, for the intersection and the traffic signal um, and implement the, the mitigation measures we, uh, we feel are feasible. Um, but we will uh, provide some additional information concerning um, the safety benefits for the signalization and uh, the regrading for the site distance and the uh, the realignment uh, at a later date. One other little piece I'll add about just regarding the safety around the blind curves and the S curve. Um, one one big thing this project is adding adding that will improve the safety of when those situations do happen, whether it's weather or whatever. Uh, the improve the increased uh, lane width 
uh, will help give uh, tr drivers more space to pull over. Um, the turn lanes and the shoulder will also provide space for cars to have a safe, recoverable pullover before winding up in the ditch. Um, the other improvements that will help a lot are the, the warning signs that will be going in well in advance of the signal to uh, let people know that there is a signal ahead. There will be there will likely be flashing um, notifications when the signal will be red or if there's a queue, um, things like that to make sure that drivers know well in advance, even if they can't see the signal, that there is one coming um, uh, in the near future. Ms. Staten asks, uh, do we agree that moving reservoir roads to the top of the hill near the power and gas lines is a viable option? Um, that is something that we would have to, you know, consider in another study. Um, it would involve much greater property impacts, including potential total takes of uh, land, which we obviously try to avoid as much as possible, um, and massive utility impacts with the gas line itself. Uh, the gas companies, there's two different gas companies actually running through. There are two different 30-inch transmission lines, and they, generally speaking, uh, do like to avoid uh, roads going over top of those transmission lines for access purposes. So we would have to look at it further, but um, those are some of the things that I know about in my head. Jim, would you like to add anything to that? I, I think you covered it. Are there any other uh, questions that anyone would like to ask in the chat box? Okay, um, if there are no other questions, then this will conclude the live chat question and answer portion of the Evergreen Mills Virtual Road Virtual Public Information Meeting. Uh, I'll turn the reins back over to you, Marie. I think um, we still have a few minutes, so we will gladly um, stay online and wait if there's any other questions until 7.30. So, um, Ms. Dayton does have an additional question just now, um, asking, if the fog is being considered at Goose Creek, um, the bridge itself over Goose Creek is not uh, is not a part of our project, so we aren't necessarily considering that. One thing that I will say, however, is there's a significant flooding and fog issue at the current Watson Road crossing over Black Branch, um, and the realignment will be raising that crossing uh, fairly considerably, which will alleviate concerns at that location. Okay, we have an additional question from Ms. Norton asking uh, with regards to the Location of Reservoir Road, uh, its connection to Gloucester Evergreen Mills, as well as uh, similar intersections in the near area, Ryan Road and Belmont Road and Sigland. Uh, she wants to know how will the traffic signal help stop rear end crashes if the light is red and people are flying off the road um, when it is green or yellow. Um, one thing that will help that is the advanced warning systems that would be um, provided uh, well in advance of the signal. Um, and I will let Anthony add on to that if you have anything uh, else to add. Uh, I, I don't have anything to add. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Shenton uh, are asking if we were to consider traffic circles or an expansion of the scope, how might that affect the timeline for implementation? Um, I'm going to uh, let Jim Zeller uh, chime in on that. Well, uh, this, this speaks to um, uh, to the, you know, the the next steps in, in project development. Um, at this point, you know, we, we are uh, uh, you know, th this is the public involvement stage of the project. Uh, 
as uh, uh, you know, we're, we're taking taking your commentary, uh, and um, and and that can continue even after this after this meeting. If you uh, have an idea uh, or a suggestion or a comment that can occur to you uh, in the next you know, several weeks, uh, you can go ahead and submit that input. Um, and like what was uh, described earlier, all of this input gets compiled into a transcript, and and where there would be a, a uh, formal staff response to each of these comments and suggestions. And then that would be um, uh, incorporated into um, uh, staff's recommendation when we go to the next major milestone of the project, which is the endorsement of the project's uh, major design elements by, by our Board of Supervisors. Um, and so, uh, and, and again, uh, I, I firmly believe that that there will be um, uh, input in uh, in these proceedings that will lead staff to a better project, a better final product. Uh, but that, you know, uh, but that will be contained in the in the transcript that goes to the board of supervisors. That is uh, uh, that is also a public meeting. It is, it is held at one of uh, the board's uh, regularly scheduled business meetings, and um, uh, the the, uh, the board can either accept staff's recommendation on the design elements of the project, uh, or they can um, they can send us back to the drawing board uh, to uh, consider increases in the scope. Um, uh, uh, I, I think um, uh, replacing the signalized intersection with a roundabout would be uh, difficult because it does not comply. The location is very makes it very difficult to comply with the geometric requirements for roundabouts. Um, uh, again, as was indicated earlier, you want fairly level ground. Uh, or a roundabout because you know, how slowly the, the vehicles have to uh, uh, navigate the roundabout, and uh, they need to be able to to, to uh, uh, get to that speed. Um, and it's kind of hard to do when you're when you're coming down a steep hill. Um, but uh, you know, nevertheless. It, it, it's uh, you know, the board will uh, uh, either endorse the project as designed and modified, if, if necessary, or as appropriate in the transcript, or uh, they could send us back to the drawing board. But you do have to keep in mind uh, our budgets are finite, and um, and you know, and you know, there would. That would be that would be a complication of significantly expanding the scope of the project. Okay, we have um, a couple of additional questions. One from Ms. Rampey asking the warning signal that we were talking about. How far would that be from the proposed light? Uh, there will have to be additional traffic studies to determine that during the final design, um, but it will be based on the stopping site distance of uh, vehicles. The design vehicle on the road. It will be based on the, the expected cue for the signal itself, and it will be based on the geometric uh, constraints of the roadway. Um, another question from Ms. Dayton was: Do we have a count of how many commercial or dump trucks travel down Evergreen Mills Road? Um, I, do, Anthony, do you have that data handy, or could we just follow back up if we need to? Um, so we can. Uh look up the average daily percentages um, and provide that as a part of the record. Um, but as a part of our um, analysis, uh, we had for the uh, AM peak hour um, was 4% northbound or 4% southbound and 8% northbound. And then in the PM, it was 4% southbound and 3% northbound. Um, and that is, that is heavy vehicles. 
um, and we have we don't necessarily distinguish just specifically commercial or dump truck, but just heavy vehicles. I have another question uh, from Mr. Cooney regarding the safety along Watson Road, um, uh, concerning that the spot improvement at this intersection will not address the safety concerns along the, the, the full length of the roadway itself. Um, and I, I think, again, I, unless Jim wants to refute you guys, I think that mostly would just be outside the scope of, of this particular project. We are uh, just looking at the safety at the intersection for this project. Um, but you can, I can refer you to the uh, Evergreen Mills and Watson Road RSA for more information um, about the overall Watson Road safety. Um, there's another portion of that question asking uh, uh, don't signal increase rear end collisions um, for intersections and uh, how many more rear end collisions would be projected after the signal is added. Um, I, do not think we have data on how many collisions would be expected under the proposed condition, um, but the rear end collisions are something that we attempted to mitigate through the design with the inclusion of turn lanes and shoulders, uh, paved shoulders, uh, to provide vehicle uh, space to get out of the way and avoid uh, vehicles that are stopped. It also goes to the you know, the um, uh, you know, the concept that you know, overall. Uh, it is the angle crashes that tend to be uh, more severe than, than rear end crashes, and um, uh, and that's where you know, uh, uh, you know, much of the benefit of the project as designed uh, comes from. That uh, it will uh, uh, we're expecting it to uh, uh, aid more with, with those types of crashes that are. One other follow-up question from uh, Ms. Daniel was, uh, when was that dump truck data collected? Uh, and do you have um, a go on that? Uh, yeah, so the turning movement counts that were collected at the uh, intersections of Evergreen Mills, of Watson Road and Reservoir Road uh, was June 6, 2019. That was a Thursday uh, during school. Uh, we didn't note any adverse conditions uh, during that day. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, we will now, we appreciate everyone um, for the open dialogue that we've had this evening. Um, you drive Evergreen Mills Road and Watson and Reservoir, and we want to know and understand all of your experiences and perspectives. And we've heard a lot of helpful information tonight. Your feedback um, is very important in part of this process for this project. If you are unable to submit your questions before or during this meeting, you still have time to do so by visiting loudon.gov slash evergreenmills realignment to submit questions through our comment form. You will have until October 23rd to send in your question or a comment, and you may also email the project team at ctci at loudon.gov. Questions and answers from this meeting will be compiled and provided on the Evergreen Mills Road project page. If you're interested in project updates, please subscribe for updates at loudon.gov slash evergreen mills realignment. Thanks everyone for your time and attention on this evening's call. Before we leave, one additional note, um, just as so everybody is aware, we will um, record everything that's been in the chat box and we will address your questions as possible and post them on our project website later this week.